So good afternoon. Welcome to the uh, Korea FIT and Leisure product training. Uh, I will go through the slides one by one and explain to the explain to you what uh, what all information is there, so that you can uh, you have good information about it. Uh, let's start with the general information of the destination. South Korea is. located on the eastern side, East Asia side of the globe. Uh, it's located between China and Japan. Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, you know, it's a small country with a population of 50 uh, million people. Uh, it's got four different, different clim you know, climate zones. Uh, it, the country is three and a half hours ahead from India as a, in the time zone. The local currency is Korean won. Uh, Korean won is not directly interchangeable to Indian rupee uh, in India, so if you are as a tourist, if you are going to, to South Korea, you need to purchase dollar and then convert it into uh, the local Korean won when you land there at the airport or any other place. To give you a you know exchange rate uh, understanding, it says uh, one dollar is equal to thousand Korean won. So, for example, in a happy uh, uh, McDonald's happy meal will cost you around five to six thousand won, which is around five to six dollars, uh, roughly around the same cost that you would uh, you would be uh, paying for the same product in India. Uh, three big cities in the country are Seoul, Busan, Daegu. Let's move on to the next. Uh, as you can see from this slide, uh, basically I've shown you the location of the country. As you can see, it's a small country located on the uh, eastern side of the Asian map between China and Japan. So Seoul, uh, the capital city, is very well connected to China and Japan. So Beijing, Tokyo, and Seoul becomes the kind of like a golden triangle of the East Asia. Next, heading to the next slide. Uh, so you can see uh, Korea has four distinct seasons, just like in India, uh, it is you know one of the countries which has clear, distinct, demarcated seasons. However, the timings, as you can see, are a little different from India. The spring starts from March to May, which is generally like the peak summer season here. And then their summers is in, from June to August. Uh, autumn from September to November and December to February is winter. Summer and autumn, uh, sorry, spring and autumn will be around 10 to 15 degrees of temperature. Uh, summer is around 15 to 25 degrees. Uh, you know, maximum it can go up to is 30 degrees, but very, very pleasant. So even in the summertime of Korea, it's very pleasant for Indian, Indian people. Uh, winter is cold. Uh, you know, it snows there. Uh, it can go up to minus 10 at certain points, more than that also. So December, January, February is, you know, cold season. January, February is the maximum uh, snow that happens. So winter is basically recommended for people who would want to experience winter products. However, otherwise, the best time to travel from Indian perspective is from March to autumn, which is basically starting from March to uh, November. Next slide. Uh, you know, it, Korea is a very well developed country, so it has uh, you know all modes of uh, transportation inside the country. So domestic flights, KTX is a bullet train which connects the entire country from north to south. Uh, metro uh, subways are called met, uh, metros are called subways. There, uh, very well well connected Seoul city with its neighboring areas uh, with an extensive metro system. Uh, taxis are normal, buses are you know they're buses in each cities and there are ferries if you want to trans you know travel from the main mainland to smaller islands which are located nearby so when we see for uh, you know in the next slide when we see vehicles used for tourists there are basically three categories of vehicles used for smaller group uh, you know FIT clientele for one to five people it will be a minivan it has sufficient capacity for four people sitting and luggage you know more than five people will be a mini bus and then more than 15 people will be a large bus. So principally, these are the three basic type of uh, you know transportation used for FITs and groups when they travel to Korea. Let's talk about some flight connections from India to Korea. So flight connections from India to Korea have definitely improved over the years. Currently, we have uh, direct flight connectivity from Delhi and Mumbai. As you can see from the slide, the maximum flight connections, you know, direct flight connections are from Delhi. You have Asiana flying the daily. Uh, you have Korean Air flying five times a week and Air India flying three times a week. Uh, bear in mind the Air India flight is a, you know, there's a technical halt in Hong Kong, so you don't have to change the aircraft. You just go from Delhi to Hong Kong and then wait for an hour and then fly to Seoul. 
So we technically consider it into the direct flight category. Uh, from Mumbai, you have Korean Air flying three times a week. Uh, when we talk about via flights, so anywhere, if you are located in any, any other part of India, and so you are very well connected by one-stop flights, any major, any international airport from India can give you a one-stop flight to South Korea. So, um, Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, Chennai, Kolkata, Hyderabad are the main cities from where people fly internationally. Uh, all these six cities have via flight connections, principally from South Asia. So you have, uh, you know, Singapore Airlines, Malaysian Airlines, Thai Airways, giving you via flight connections multiple times a day. And Cathay again is one of the very well connected flight aircraft from India because it flies from all the cities, all the metro cities, and it gives you flights to Hong Kong. And from Hong Kong, you have direct flights to Korea almost, you know, a couple of times in, a, in per day. And if you're flying from north, uh, especially from Delhi, then China Eastern, China Southern, China Airlines gives you very, very good connections uh, via Taiwan and Shanghai and Beijing, which is just two hours away from South Korea. So the airport, Incheon International Airport, is um, your, the point of your arrival in the country. Uh, it has been ranked as the world's best airport since 2005, so it's almost 12 years in a row now. Uh, the airport itself is a complete tourist attraction and, uh, you know, destination. For example, uh, you know, the airport itself has its, uh, you know, it's a, has a very, very big duty-free shop. They have live performances. There's an observation deck. Uh, there's an ecological garden, uh, you know, skating rinks, movie theater, even a casino and a golf club. Uh, so basically, if you are guest or uh, you are, you know, uh, at the airport, in the, and you have a couple of hours to spend before you take your flight, you have still so many activities to do there. And if you're transiting uh, Korea and you're flying beyond to Japan or to U.S. or to, uh, you know, uh, Canada, then during between your transit, uh, between during a transit stay, you can take free transit tours where you can exit the airport, enter the country, and come back. Uh, they're all free of cost, of course. So let's take a quick look at the free transit tours. So uh, as you can see uh, from the slide, who all are qualified to take the tour are basically people who are uh, using uh, South Korea or Incheon Airport as a transit to reach a certain other destination. Uh, best connections from Indian perspectives are people going to Japan or to the U.S. West Coast or to the Canada West Coast, for example, L.A., San Francisco, Toronto, Vancouver, or even Hawaii. So a lot of people try, you know, flying on that sector. They, you know, Korean Air or Asiana gives you very, very good connections, and you can also avail this facility to take a glimpse of the country where you're, where, you know, while you're transiting. There are a couple of transit tours you can see depending upon your, the period of your, uh, you know, halt. So from one hour to up to five hours, you have different programs. Uh, you can, you know, when you reach at the airport, you can go to the transit tour counter, get yourself booked, and if there's seats available, they will put you on a bus, and it will be a guided tour, take you around the city, and come back. Let's talk a little bit about the visa. So for Indian people, as of now, you require a South Korean visa to enter the country. Uh, so, you know, as a first-time traveler, you will always be given a single entry visa, which will be valid for 90 days. So, you know, you can, once you booked your, uh, you know, arrangements in Korea, you can plan well in advance for your visas. The visa fee is nominal. It's 2,800 rupees. If you have prior travel history to South Korea, then you can apply for multiple entries, multiple entry visa. The, uh, you know, process is quite simple. It takes no, normally around four working days. Uh, the visas application centers are divided into four zones, north, east, south, and west. North and east are handled by the VFS office, uh, where you have to deposit all the documents and everything, and they issue the visa through the embassy. Uh, south and west, which is Chennai and Mumbai, they have the advantage of having a consulate office there, so you can apply directly to the consulate office and get your visas done. Bear in mind, when you do your visas through the VFS, they charge you an extra additional service charge of approximately 900 rupees per pax. 
The documentation is also very simple. It is just the application form, two photographs, and one year of ITR. In case you don't have an ITR, then a six months of bank statement uh, with, a, with a, you know, a letter saying that why you don't have an ITR. That's the basic simple process, uh, you know, and the visas are issued in four working days. Let's talk about the accommodation. So Korea is a very well developed country, and it has a very very uh, you know well developed uh, trans you know tourist hospitality sector. So you have you know cat tourists from all categories coming over to the country. So you have even for the even the extreme basic budget travelers, there are homestays and guest houses that you can book online or offline. However, we we don't recommend these because they are not properly vetted by the tourism board and also the travel agent is not able to book them uh, or the DMC is not able to book them. So for travel industry, we recommend the remaining two options. First is the Benikia, which is like a government-owned uh, budget hotel chain, just like the ITDC that you have in India. So affordable house, uh, you know, accommodation three-star or three-star plus category. Uh, basic uh, services uh, with breakfast and price ranges are very nominal. The advantages are they're located almost throughout the country at key locations. So, you know, wherever you're planning your itinerary, you can always find a Benikia hotel there. And then you have the normal hotels. So normal hotels, um, you know, for all categories from two-star to six-star hotels are available. There are more than 400-plus hotels in South Korea with a lakh 25-plus rooms. Uh, lakh 25,000 plus rooms. These are, you know, so the Beniki and the hotels both can be booked through the travel agents. So it's, you know, most recommendable for you as a travel partner or a travel agent to use these and ask your travel DMC partner to do this for you. So if you uh, click on the link below, you can uh, see a list of all the recommended hotels that we have put together for you for each category for in each cities. And this is just a, you know, a recommended list. You can go beyond this. Your DMC can also recommend you hotels based on their arrangements and based on their best available rates. Uh, this is an important subject for Indian people with the food. So Indian people, when they're traveling internationally, have been normally very, very particular about the food that they eat. So we can we break it down. Uh, we break down the food uh, available in Korea for to three categories for you. There's the Korean food, there's the international food, and the Indian food. When we talk about Korean food, it is very popular for international tourists, especially from Asian countries. Uh, good thing about the Korean food is that they're very spicy and you know fried, so they're very palatable to the Indian taste. So people who want to try out, then definitely... Um, you know, try out a few dishes. Kimchi is their, you know, signature dish. It's a pickled cabbage and radish pickle. Uh, it's a signature dish of Korea, very, very famous. Also available in India and many restaurants. Uh, Korean food is heavy use of meat and seafood, but there are a lot of vegetarian options also available for people. So local food, as you can understand, uh, can be, you know, found at very basic prices. Then you have the international food. So Korea being a very, very developed international metropolitan country, they have all international chains available there, so be it a McDonald's or a KFC or a Pizza Hut or any other international chain that you're looking for, you can find it on in the major cities. So international food or continental food or, you know, vegan food is not a problem. And you've got a lot of Michelin star restaurants also available in Korea. And then you have the finally the Indian food. So there's a lot of good news in this also. First is that South Korean people, they themselves love Indian food. They love the taste, the flavor. There are more than 100 Indian restaurants available in South Korea. Uh, all the major cities that we promote in Indian country, Indian Indian market have Indian restaurants available. Uh, bear in mind, when we talk about Indian restaurants in South Korea, we principally mean North Indian food, which is basically, you know, which is naan, naan bread and rice and, you know, dal and butter chicken and tandoori chicken and stuff like that. It's not South Indian food, you know, unfortunately till now, South Indian food is not very popular there, but North Indian food is very popular. Vegetarian both, and vegetarian and non-vegetarian, both options are available. If you click on this link, then you can see a list of all the Korean restaurants uh, which are approved by the Korea Tourism. It, 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 gives, it gives their names, their location, their, uh, you know, uh, seating capacity, their parking space availability, and 
uh, what are the sites and attractions near them. So very, very detailed and exhaustive list for your use. These are some of the uh, suggested Korean food for Indian people. So a lot of people, um, you know, Indian tourists, they're getting experimental these days, and they ask their travel agent when they go to a particular country that what food they should try. Of course, there are definitely many more foods available that they can try, but these are the first of the first-hand recommended list that we can, I can tell you that you can, you know, close your eyes and tell your clients about it. Bibimbap, as you can see, is rice plus mixed, you know, vegetables and meat mix. So you can have different kind of meat. You can have all meats mixed together, or you can have a particular meat which is you are comfortable with, or you can remove all the meat and have it as a vegetarian dish. Samgetan, as you see, is a classic chicken soup. Uh, very, very nice, very popular in Korea, and definitely a must try for the Indian people. Chimek is, a, you know, con Korean concept of Korean fried chicken with beer. Uh, I don't think any Indian people will mind fried chicken with beer. It's a classic combination in Korea, very popular and highly recommended for Indian tourists also. Kimchi, as I already told you, is the signature dish of Korea. It's a side dish. It's available at almost all restaurants with all food. Uh, Koreans love to eat it with the, you know, any kind of food that having they're having. So once Indians are there, they can definitely give it a shot. Bingsu is the form of Korean um, desserts. As you can see from the image, they're quite, you know, it has ice cream, it has got fruits, and the, you know, the base of it is it's red bean paste. Uh, you know, it might sound strange, but it, it's very delicious, and Indians must give it a shot. And soju is their famous Korean rice wine or liquor. It is available at almost every departmental store, every convenience store, and all restaurants. You know, it's Korean's favorite drink. Indians giving trying going to going to Korea should definitely give it a shot. They're relatively almost very inexpensive. Like you know, a bottle will cost you around three thousand uh, won, which is around three dollars, and two people can enjoy one bottle. So these are uh, the destinations that we promote in India. So there are some popular destinations and there are some nearby locations around it. So Seoul, Jeju Island and Busan are the three main signature destinations that we promote in the Indian market. They form the golden triangle of, in, of, of South Korea for Indian people. Then we have Gyeongju, it's a historical city. It's located next to Busan, so it can be clubbed together. And then we have the ski resorts. Because uh, you know there's a growing demand of ski tourism or winter tourism in India, and Korea is a relatively unexplored, you know, location for this. But Korea has the advantage of giving very un affordable, um, you know, experiences of winter sports, which I will explain later in the uh, later in the presentation. So let's start with Seoul first. So before that, let me show you from the uh, map all the key tourist locations. So as you can see on the top left is the Incheon Airport in Seoul. Bear in mind, the Incheon Airport is not located in the Seoul city. It's an hour drive, Delhi Gurgaon. Uh, then on the bottom right, you have Busan, uh, which is connected by a flight, or you can take a KTX bullet train, which takes about two hours. Busan and Gyeongju are two cities located next to each other, so it's 70 kilometers uh, distance from each other, which is about an hour's drive. And then you have on the bottom most part of the map is Jeju Island, which is connected by flights from Je from Busan and Seoul. And on the right hand side of uh, top right is the ski resort area. So it's the ski. Re there are many ski resorts that are scattered around this area. So the closest will be about two hours drive from the Seoul city, and the farthest will be four to five hours away. Uh, left side you have the inter uh, you know internal flight connections some you know some idea so you have Seoul Busan Seoul Seoul Busan Seoul Jeju Busan and Seoul Jeju Seoul all three flights available um, you know as you can see more than 50 flights per day per sector so timing is not a problem so you know please feel free to make whatever kind of itinerary you want to and then you can just put the you know flight at any convenient point in time. So we start with Seoul. As I said, it's the capital city of Korea is the largest city. It has got a you know 600 years plus of ancient history. It has got few of the UNESCO heritage sites of the country like Gyeongbok Palace, Chongdeokgung Palace, 
It's an hour drive from the airport, and it's also a hub for MICE tourism. So what? So before I start off on the tourism aspect, let's let take a look at the map of Seoul. So even though it's a cluttered map, uh, I hope from the map you can understand that the city is divided into two parts, north and south, with a river running between. So the top part has a downtown area, which is marked in a red square, and the bottom part is also has a downtown area, which is marked in a red square. So from the map, you can understand the top part is the downtown Seoul or the main city, which has got the palaces, the Myeongdong shopping area, in Seoul Tower, and a village in, in Sadong. So whenever you recommend a, hot a hotel, you should recommend this place because this is the heart of the city. It's called the Gangbuk or the North Seoul. Then you have the Han River, which is called the Han River. It basically divides the city into two parts. And then you have Gangnam, which is South Seoul. So I'm sure you've heard of the Gangnam style song by Sai, which was very popular a few years ago. So that is basically a song dedicated to this, this location. So Gangnam is the most high end and the most newest part of Seoul, Seoul or in fact South Korea. It has got the Lotte World uh, you know, theme park or the Lotte World Tower, quakes and casinos and all the modern extravaganza located in this area. Any point you want to drive from the uh, north part to the south part from any part of the city, uh, you will take around 40 minutes. There are 30 plus bridges connecting the north to the south at different locations. The airport is on the left, around 45 minutes drive. Now, what are the main tours that are available in the city? So, as I explained from the map, the city is divided into two parts. So, each part has its city tour. First is the half-day city tour of Seoul City, which is the main city tour, which includes the palace, the Bukchong Hanok village, the presidential house, the Chongwa Day, the Inserong and the Antique Street, and nearby areas. So it's like a three to five hour duration uh, sightseeing tour. The Gyeongbuk Palace, has a royal changing of guard ceremony in the morning and in the evening, which is like uh, the changing of guard ceremony at the Buckingham Palace in UK, but it's the oriental style. It is definitely a must-visit and a must-see attraction. And the guard changing ceremony itself is also a must-see um, activity. Next, we have a sightseeing tour of the Gangnam, which is the south southern part of the city, which includes Yoido Island, which is main, also known as the Manhattan of Korea. It's the location with all the you know skyscrapers. It also has the Korean Parliament. It has uh, you know LG headquarters and a lot of other interesting aspects. It also has the world's largest church. It's called the Yoido Full Gospel Church. Also, nice you know, interesting site to visit. Then you have the famous Gangnam Street. Uh, you have the Coex uh, Aquarium. You have the Coex is basically an aquarium and shopping mall and exhibition center all clubbed together at one place. The free shop also. Then you have Bong Yung Sa Temple, one of the very very nice looking temples in the in the city. Uh, it's a landmark Buddhist monument. So this take, this tour also takes around three to five hours. So half the tour of the north and half the tour of the south. They are the principally the two tours that you have in the Seoul city. Then we look at the optionals that you have in the uh, that the city has to offer. So you have the end Seoul Tower, which is like a you know tower and observatory on the top, uh, almost roughly at a height of around 500 meters with the you know with the mount uh, with a small hill and the tower combined height is around 500 meter. Uh, you can get a 360 view on the top uh, from the observatory. There are restaurants, there are shopping area also in the in this location, and then you have a Han River cruise which is uh, like a, you know, a river cruise in the main, uh, you know, it is one of the best ways of uh, seeing the Seoul city. It's a one-hour cruise, uh, which takes you around uh, the main locations, shows you the main locations from the river area. Uh, uh, the One of the best times to do this cruise is in the evening at 7 p.m., where you have one of the fountain, uh, you know, bridge fountains uh, show happening, uh, taking place at that time. The cruise can be done with dinner also in the evening or without dinner. Both options are available. Then you have uh, Lotte World Theme Park. This is uh, the world's largest indoor theme park. 
what you see on the picture is in the picture is the outdoor part of it but there's an the indoor part also so it's got a lot of attractions for kids and uh, some of the thrilling rides it's located in the southern part of the city it takes about half to full day where you can do this app optional tour and then you have the nanta show this is one of the very very famous shows of south korea it's a non korean non verbal performance uh, it's an hour long show uh, hour long hour long 15 minute uh, there are many theaters located around the city so based on where you are staying you can always choose a theater which is near you uh, it's a since it's non verbal then the language is not a barrier and it's a you know combination of comical arts and martial arts uh it's a very very inter- inter- interesting entertaining and a must visit show for indian people traveling to korea for the first time some more optional tours you have a graven wax museum one of the famous uh, wax museums of france this is their first wax museum in asia it's got more than 100 plus international celebrities including some from india you have a trikai museum it's uh, basically a trikai is a museum which creates 2d art in the 3d uh, by the use of illusion uh, very interesting uh, they are now also opening their branches in other countries like hong kong and uh, you know in thailand bangkok uh, if you go to korea then you can definitely try out there also then you have a new attraction in south korea which is called the seoul sky Uh, as you can see from the image this is uh, you know a observatory located on top of a you know a, a newly built tower is the world's third highest observation deck located at the front 21st floor uh, the highlight is that the elevator that takes you to, on, to the top is the world's fastest elevator going from 0 to 121 floor in less than 60 seconds which is op- approximately a speed of 36 kilometers per hour it's a tallest devil uh, you know double decker elevated uh, elevator with led walls and a roof that is one of its kind in the world now let's take a look at the shopping so shop south korea the shoppers paradise and the hub of shopping takes place in seoul city so you have a uh, short dedicated shopping districts where you can shop till you drop uh, they are mostly located in the northern area or uh, the north seoul area near the downtown so the three prominent locations are myeongdong <coughs> the dongdaebun market and the namdaebun market so myeongdong is the favorite and the most popular shopping street of korea uh, for tourists to for tourists especially you can uh, and then you have dongdaebun which is famous for its shopping malls and 24 hour shopping market and then you have namdaebun which is uh, basically a wholesalers market so you have you can buy items at a very very nominal prices these are located closed by to each other now what can you buy in korea principally the highlights for tourists will be antiques souvenirs you call korean cosmetics are very very famous so korean cosmetics you know fashion in terms of clothes and shoes these are the very popular items indians love technology so lg samsung you know these are all korean brands maybe when you are visiting korea you can buy your favorite next lg or a samsung product from there also then let's look at look at uh, some tours which are can be done outside the city so these are basically full day activities first is the everland theme park so indians love theme park and this is the largest theme park that you have in south korea it's located at about a 40 minute to 1 hour drive from the main city uh it this the theme park has more than 100 rides a lot of thrilling rides what you see in the image is uh t express it's the world's highest wooden roller coaster then you have the you know, lost world utopia and other it- attractions even and this is one of the few uh, theme parks in the world to have pandas also so you can see two giant pandas when you visit the everland theme park and then you have a very special location which is called the demilitarized zone now this is the buffer area between north and south korea uh, basically the north korea south korea border it's located just 60 kilometers or 1 hour drive from the seoul city it's also the world's most heavily guarded border there are two parts of the tour the basic tour you can see the war relics and monuments and the tunnels and all the you know information about the korean war and if you want to do the extensive tour you can go up to the joint security area which is like right on the border line where you have the north korea on the other side and you have the uh, you know 
a room that you see in the image and you have got a table in between in, in, inside where a line runs through on the other side is north korea and this side is south korea and you have both sides have their soldiers placed inside very very fascinating experience and then you have a Wosang Fortress. This is also an hour's drive from the city. It's one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Uh, it's a very, very impressive structure. which gives you a glimpse of Korean you know, <clears throat> warfare, Korean defense systems, and Korean palaces. And tourists can, tourists can also experience Korean traditional archery here. And you have a One Mount Snow Park. This is, again, outside the city. It's A snow park obviously means 365 days a year you have a snow theme park. There are more than 100 rides. The main attraction is basically a dog sleighing experience where, you know, there's a dog sleigh and you can climb and the dogs run you around the entire theme park. And there's a nice Indian restaurant just outside the theme park for your lunches and dinners. So before we start off with Jeju, uh, South Seoul, very simple, if you see from the uh, presentation. So two basic uh, two basic tours, half day tour of north, half day tour of south, then optional tours, and then outside city tours, op outside optional tours outside the city. Let's look at look at let's, now. Let's take a look at Jeju Island. So Jeju Island, from the image you can also see a visa-free destination tag there. This is uh, located um, on the south of the mainland of Korea. This is the only island in the world to be included in the seven new natural wonders of the world. The island has three UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Uh, one of the most iconic islands, island destinations in Asia. And it's famous for its natural beauty, its you know ecological atmosphere, ecological diversity, and you know water sports and adventure sports. It's also a visa-free destination. Uh, point being that uh, you have to enter the Jeju Island without touching the mainland Korea to avail this opportunity. So. The best option for Indian people to travel to, visa, to Jeju Island without visa is to, you know, fly via Hong Kong. How do you do that? You take a Cathay Pacific. So Cathay Pacific flies from multiple cities in India to Hong Kong, and from Hong Kong you have multiple flight connections to Jeju per day. So you can do India Hong Kong and Hong Kong Jeju, and when you you don't require a visa, and uh, there is no visa fees also to be paid. Uh, it's just, you know, your passport gets stamped with South Korean visa and you enter the island. Let's take a quick look at the island, you know, from the map. So again, a very cluttered map, but you basically have to understand that, uh, you know, the, the, the island has four sides, north, south, east, and west. The center of the island is the Halasan National Park and a volcano in the center. So you cannot travel from south to north or north to south you know, directly you have to you know go around from the east side or the west side. So we principally divide the from for tourist purpose we principally divide the city into four parts: north, east, south, west. Each has got its attractions and its half day tours. So let's look at let let's take a look at half day tours at each locations. First is the half day tour of the north city tour. So before that, I uh, just wanted to make a point that the North has the Jeju city, the airport, and the shopping areas. This is where we recommend our Indian tourists to stay because it's got Indian restaurants and everything nearby. And then you have other attractions and unique locations at other parts of the city, of the island. The so north is basically the city area, a very small city tour which includes beaches, Jeju Stone Park, you know, local market, Dongun Market is one of the oldest markets of the island. Uh, Tangerine chocolates are very famous of this island. You can get them back as souvenirs for your tourists, for your, you know, for for your relatives when you come back to India. The short tour takes about two to three hours. Then you have a Jeju East Coast tour. This is the main and the most popular tour of South uh, for the Jeju Island because of its attractions. First is the Manjangul Cave. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's one of the longest lava tubes in the world. They're about three, 13 kilometers long. One kilometer of it is open to the public to enter inside. Uh, and then you have the Songsan Sunrise Peak. This is the this is a you know a small tough cone volcano located on the east coast. 
the highlight it's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is the most famous attraction of the Jeju Island. The advantage, the unique part of this volcano is that you can climb on top of this of this you know volcano. There are not many volcanoes in the world where you can top on climb on top of a volcano. You have the Shobdi Koji coastline. This is one of the be most beautiful locations, coastline locations in the island. A lot of co you know Korean movies, dramas, and some international movies have also been shot in this location. So a beautiful site, and then a folk village. So a folk village basically gives you a glimpse of how the in you know old or you know centuries ago how the old people you know people of Jeju used to live their traditional houses, their huts, their lifestyle, everything. It's quite a fascinating experience. So this tour takes about half a day. You can club it with the knot to make it a full day tour. And then you have a south course tour. South part is also very famous uh, because of its botanical garden. It's a teddy bear museum, which is uh, you know very, the most unique teddy bear museum in the world. It has got you know teddy bears from collected from all over the world from the last hundred years. It also has the world's smallest teddy bear which is around just around 4.5 millimeters you have some you have three main waterfalls one of them is the Chonjeon waterfall which is very famous and then you have cliffs and Jusung Jolly cliff these are all sites and locations that you can enjoy during your half day tour of the south and similarly you have a half day tour of the west coast which includes Shobje beach uh, the best beach of Jeju island it's famous because of its shallow waters so even half a kilometer into the beach you would the water will still reach your uh, belly or your chest so you can go deep inside the water is crystal clear so you can see below a lot of water sport activities happening here you have the halim park you have the spirited garden you have the jeju mini land the jeju mini land appeals to a lot of indian people because it's got you know miniatures of the attractions of all over the world more than 116 architectural wonders across the world are, you know, depicted here, including the Taj Mahal from India. Again, a half-day tour. So four half-day tours, you can club them based on your convenience and the duration of your client's stay. Then there are some optional tours that you can see and, uh, you know, do in this. Uh, of course, there are many, but some of the important ones I'll men mention. One is the Love Land. So I've look, mentioned the time duration and the location so that you can understand where it is located and with which city tour you can club it with. So Loveland is the world's only of its kind outdoor erotic theme park. A very, very quirky product. We recommend it to a lot of honeymoon travelers who go there. Uh, you know, you can see a lot of things around the world, but not something like this anywhere else. It's got about 140 sculptures at different, you know, shapes and sizes. Very, very interesting and fascinating for people to see with a quirky mind. Then you have a Hanwha Aqua Planet. It is one of the largest aqua planets in uh, in, Je in, Jeju, in Jeju and in Korea also. Uh, very, very nice experience for people who are wanting to witness sea life and aquamarine life. Then you have a Jeju Yacht Tour. This is very famous and very popular for tourists because you can see dolphins, you can do fishing, and if you catch the fish, you can have a raw sea, you know, fish tasting experience also. Um, you know, the uh, one-hour yacht tour comes with snacks and beverages which are on the house, so you can eat and drink and enjoy while you're, you know, having your yacht tour. And then there is a unique product in Korea, is in Jeju Island, which is a submarine tour. So there are not many places in the world where you can have submarines. And this is the world's deepest submarine tour, which goes to up to more than 120 feet. You can see you know, uh, countless fishes, rare coral reefs, and then shipwrecks at the bottom. The whole experience involves taking a boat to the met to the center, of, you know, to deep into the ocean, and then climbing onto a submarine, and then going down and coming back, and again taking the boat back to the island. The whole duration is about two hours. Very, very fascinating experience and a must visit for adventure lovers and people traveling with their families and children. So, uh, just uh, you know, recapping Jeju Island, four basic sightseeing tours on each side, half day, and then optionals at each location, which you can club with your itinerary. Then you have Busan. This is uh, the second largest city of Korea, uh, South Korea. Uh, 
and it's located in the southeastern side. Uh, there's a very famous you know, Busan International Film Festival that happens this in October every year in this location. The city is famous for its seafood, its uh, you know entertainment, its shopping, and it also has the world's largest shopping mall also. City tour of uh, Busan is very simple. There are two half-day city tours, one along the coastline and one inside the city. So the half-day city tour, first one is along the coastline, which includes uh, some of the places like Dombek from Island, Busan Cinema Center. This is the world's largest uh, pillarless roof. Uh, you, the roof that you see in the image is almost 2.5 times the size of a uh, football field uh, with 42,000 LED lights on, under the roof. It gives a fascinating experience of lighting up in the evening. You have the Centum City, which is like the newest and the skyscraper city part of Busan. It also has the world's largest shopping mall, which is called the Sin Sega Centum City Mall. And you have the Heimde Beach. This is the most popular beach of South Korea uh, in the mainland. It is uh, you know, heavily packed with tourists uh, and it's located in the southern part, southern coastline of the, of the city. So when we recommend staying in, this, in Busan, we always recommend people to stay near the Heimde Beach so that in the evening you can enjoy the lovely sights and take a leisurely walk and enjoy uh, you know, seafood or you know, some food around uh, at, and have dinner around... Uh, on the banks of the beach. And then you have a Busan half day city tour, which is inside the city, which includes, um, you know, a site at the Gamchan Cultural Village. This is also located, look, known as the Machu Picchu of the East. It's a cultural village with colorful huts and houses. You have the Jagalchi Fish Market, which is one of the largest fish markets in the world. Bib Square is a you know, popular location for shopping and, uh, you know, uh, shopping pe for shopping, and then you have the Oryokdu Skywalk. Uh, Oryokdu Skywalk is located on top of a cliff, uh, and it's a glass bottom uh, skywalk. So you can, you know, it's a very very good location for taking group photos and, you know, having a good view of these islands in front and the city at the back from a cliff. So both tours take about half days. You can club, club them together to make a full day tour. And then you have a few optionals. You have a Busan Sea Life Aquarium with a lot of sea life available to see. You have a yacht tour. You have a Trikai Museum here also. And then you have our uh, last location that we promote is Gyeongju. This is a very interesting location. This is uh, just located one hour driving distance from Busan, so it can be very easily clubbed with Busan as an extension tour for one day. Uh, it's basically the ancient capital city of Korea. Uh, it's also a historical city. Uh, it is home to the large, uh, largest number of UNESCO World Heritage Sites in the country. Uh, Gyeongju is almost called like an open museum or outdoor museum because the entire city is like a museum with cultural heritage sites. So Gyeongju can be covered in one day. The basic attraction, a full day sightseeing tour would include the Bulguksa Temple, which is the most beautiful temple of South Korea. It's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and there are a lot of tomb, uh, you know, royal tombs available for you to see. The tomb complex has, you know, more than 20 royal tombs. One of them is open, opened so that people can go inside and see what is what were the relics and the remains that were found inside the tomb, which includes jewelries and trophies and crowns and etc. The Gyeongju National Museum has all the tombs, uh, you know, all the other historic artifacts that are found around the city collected at one place for you to see and experience. And you have Chomsong, the observatory, you know, ancient astronomical devices, and then you have a store, an ice storage. This is basically a historical fridge where people can use, you know, people can store ice and it will not melt in the summertime. So all of this can be covered in one day city tour, one full day city tour. And then uh, you have some ski resorts. I'll roughly, you know, quickly go through them. So the quick points about ski tourism in Korea are this: South Korea is very, very well developed. 
for uh, winter sports and uh, ski tourism. Uh, the fact that Korea will be hosting the Winter Olympics in 2018 February is, you know, a classic example and a confirmation that the infrastructure is very well developed to, you know, accommodate that kind of event and thereby accommodate tourist, you know, experiences also. The best part is that Korea is very relatively very affordable when you com- compare it to traditional winter sports destinations like, uh, you know, Europe or Canada. Uh, you can roughly experience the same quality product at half the price, uh, even better uh, quality and product sometimes. And there are many ski resorts available in South Korea, scattered around the eastern part of the country, northeastern part of the country, and they're all located at driving distances from Seoul City. So it can just be made an extension of your tour in the winter time, uh, and there are many ski resorts to you know choose from. Some of them I will just show you here. The popular ones which are popular for international tourists are Vivaldi Ski Spa, uh, Alpenche Ski Resort, and Yongpyong Resort. You know, these are just a couple of hours drive from Seoul City, so very, very easily connected with Seoul as a one-night extension or a two-night extension. They have different slopes. They have, you know, uh, lifts and everything. They have, uh, you know, basic. you can do basic level, you can do advanced level different categories and the length of stay that we recommend in these locations is at least a night or maximum two nights for you to definitely enjoy all aspects of snow and winter tourism. So that makes it, uh, that brings me to the end of the, almost the end of the destination. Uh, Now I will just explain how you can make an itinerary of South Korea. The basic idea when you make a South Korea itinerary is to divide your day into two parts a morning and an afternoon. So if you arrive if you arrive in the morning then you can do an afternoon tour or optional optional tour. The next morning you can do an optional tour or a half day tour or you can combine two half day tours to make it a full day tour and so on. So how does it work? Let's say if you have to make a three night Seoul three night itinerary. So you know you arrive on the first day in the morning, transfer to hotel check in First day, normally we give it free so that people can rest and relax. You can give them optional tours like Han River Cruise or then Seoul Tower. Next day, you do the main city tour, which is the half the city tour of the palace, the card changing ceremony, and etc. in the morning. And you can give the evening free. Or you can even put the half day tour of south in the ev- in the afternoon to make it a full day tour. Then you move to the third day, a half day tour of the south uh, part of the city, and then evening is you know free or optional tours. Or you can give an optional tour, a full-day optional tour, to outside the city, for example, the DMZ, the Demilitarized Zone, or the theme park, or the Fort Hwasang Fortress. After that, you can have a departure back to Korea, India, or other country, or you can take a bullet train to go to Busan, or take a flight to Jeju. So about three nights is enough for you to make a good FIT itinerary for Seoul. Let's say you have to combine ski and the same product of Seoul, uh, what you can do is you can have the first two days the same, uh, arrival and th- city tour and optional tours. The third day, morning, you can you know give them a drive to the ski resort. Evening, you can be a, give a half-day ski package. The next morning, also, you can do a half-day ski package and evening back to Seoul and then back to the airport. So very simple to combine ski product into the same itinerary. Now, if you had to go to Busan, you can either take a flight or you can take a bullet train. Both experiences are quite nice. Bullet train ex- appeals to the Indian crowd because it's not a product that we have available in India. So, Seoul to Busan, bullet train two hours. You know, you can have the afternoon free or you can give a sightseeing tour. And the second day again, you have the sightseeing tour followed by optionals in the evening which the client can choose based on their budget. And then you have a full day excursion to Gyeongju which is like an AM, PM combined. So you can do drive, put the tour, lunch, and come back. And then you can take the flight back to Seoul or take a train back to Incheon Airport. Um, that is one advantage that you have the bullet train going directly to the airport. That option is also there. Or you can come, you know, go forward and take a flight to Jeju Island. So when you arrive in Jeju, you can, uh, you know, first, you can, so you're arriving to Jeju. You can arrive from either Seoul or you can arrive from Busan or you can arrive from Hong Kong also. 
so you can all you know no matter where you are arriving from you can have the same itinerary followed for jeju which is like arrival then evening free or a north tour same similarly the second day uh you know half day tour of the east or west or south or west whatever in the morning and then followed by optional similarly on the third day you can have other tours and then departure basically based on the length of your stay or the duration of your stay in the island you can split the half day tours into multiple days and combine them to make full day tours in one day and then put optionals for client to choose based on their budget and priority and preferences so a very very simple process to make korea itineraries these are the main locations that we promote in india and we we encourage you to do the same and this is a list of korean dmcs who you can contact you can make your own itineraries and contact them or you can just ask them to send their regular itineraries or their you know products and you can mix and match the rates to make the itineraries based on the information that i provided you and that will be all these are my contact details you can contact us anytime uh, our websites are mentioned here to, for you to get more information and our contact details are already here thank you so